Hello again, it's Lock Noob, and this lock pick set you see here just might be the best value budget lock pick set that I've ever come across. I can think of another couple which might be in the runnings. Maybe I'll do a video on best value budget lock pick sets in the future, but for now, let's concentrate on this one. I actually bought this with my own money from a, uh, a importers. Um, from China, so um, you can probably guess which one. I'll leave a link to this pick set below. And it came in at around 20 pounds, just under, I think, 25 US dollars. So yeah, definitely all thoughts on my own. This isn't sponsored content in any way, shape or form. And uh, yeah, let's just crack on. So what do you get? You actually get for that 20-ish pounds, 12 lock picks and yeah okay only two tension tools but you do get this pick case and if you turn it over you'll see who the maker is it is honest and if you know honest you'll know that they do make some half decent stuff sometimes not all the time one thing which um, stands out from them is the honest dong shi dimple lock picks which yeah you do need to spend about 20 minutes per pick filing it and sanding it but they're still, I think, probably the best off-brand dimple lock picks you can get. Anyway, onto this set, what do you get? Well, surprisingly, um, you get quite a good amount of very usable profiles. Starting with these turning tools though, I mean, they're okay. That's about all I can really say. They're okay. They've got sort of a flat Z wrench, something I'd normally use for dimple lock picking, but you know, it's useful in a whole load of different types of locks and well it's actually quite a, a nicely thin piece of bent steel a bit of wiper blade something like that um, when i do go on to do a demo i'll probably use some of my own turning tools because i think if you were to get this kit you probably need to uh, at least get some pieces of bent wiper blade to uh you know make up a few more turning tools but there is space in this roll case to do that. So, uh, profiles. I'll start with the weirdest ones, uh, these two. And normally I'll be like, oh, what do you even use these for? But I've been picking things like Carbon 8, uh, things like this Lips, the Banham M2000, uh, I think. And these sorts of lock picks are actually really good at picking pins uh, to the side, especially if the picks are just that little bit thicker, and these are. I'll probably just taper the tips slightly, but these are really good at picking pins at the side. You can probably just make out the pins at the side here. And some of them have pins lower in the lock, some higher, so these are actually half decent. If you didn't like them, I guess, what you could do is file them down into uh, maybe a very small half diamond or a hook or something like that. Um, and same with this one. You just round it offside to make it into a, a short to medium hook. But yeah, actually not too bad in terms of their profiles. Then we get some, a uh, whole bunch of hooks. We get a center notch sort of uh, lifting tool, one of, the, one of the lifters. These can be quite useful if you're trying to get onto a particular pin to lift it. And uh, yeah, it's not too bad, this one. Then we have uh, a, a short hook, which is, mm, I'd say flat top, then, then a weird, but actually very usable, round tipped um, hook. I found while this is a little bit of a, pardon the pun, a blunt instrument, surprisingly good in low security locks. Then the slightly deeper hooks here, got more of a, a rounded tip medium hook and a deforest ball. So yeah, while well, you don't have any sort of extreme profiles, you've got some useful ones there. Moving on, you've got a half diamond and a ball rake, perfectly usable. So you've got your double ball, your snowman there, very good for wafer locks. Half diamond is a great just all rounder. And then, Unusual for a set like this, some actual half decent profiles for rakes. You, th these are a little thin in terms of their um, uh, height, in terms of what material they've left on the picks, I guess. Makes me wonder how durable they might be, but they are quite thick in this direction. 
and you've got a city rake down here, so a double peak, triple peak, and a city rake. Uh, they are quite thick, as I mentioned, so these do vary a little uh, in terms of thickness. They clearly polish them. If you look here, the there is a little bit of finishing. I'd definitely like to run some 8, 800, sorry, or 1,000 grit sandpaper over these, but I won't for the review. We'll use them straight out of the box. But otherwise, they're not actually that bad. There aren't any particularly sharp edges. They could have been tumbled more, but they're not obscene. There's nothing too sharp here. You know, I'm not sawing um, into my thumb or anything like that. It's They're, they're actually quite usable. But they are 30 thousandths, maybe 31 thousandths. Sometimes they taper to around 28 thousandths of an inch. That's somewhere between uh, 0.7 and 0.8 millimeters. That's pretty hefty. If you've got a thin, skinny keyway, these won't fit. But if you're going to be picking some relatively low security locks and wider keyways, um, well, let's do a few demos and we'll see just how effective that they can be. Let's start out easy with some raking and this double peak on this master lock M1 Magnum or XL, depending on uh, what you like to call the lock. I got a newer version of that lock and I want to just show you how useful this sort of club-like hook is in low security locks like this with nice wide open keyways. Just listen to uh, how it just eats its way through those pins. Um, yeah, just ridiculously fast. A smaller lock with a paracentric keyway, which is a bit smaller than normal. It requires a bit more finesse. So I'm going to use this thin turning tool from the kit and this flat topped shot hook, which seems to be tapered down a little bit thinner and has a nice, relatively good shank height here. So I don't know, I'm, I'm relatively confident that we'll be able to uh, pick this lock open with a little bit of care and attention. It's got five pins, got four spool pins in. Just takes a little bit more effort to uh, pick than some other locks. And actually I really quite enjoy that. So uh, just on to pin three now. Make sure I don't overset anything. Pin one here, there we go, and we're open. I want to use a triple peak now. Got myself a relatively low security padlock, five pins, and a paracentric keyway, but this time the keyway is a little bit larger, which is good because this is quite a thick pick. I'm just going to go in and see if we can um, rake open this lock. Very light tension, lots of jiggling and raking, and hopefully we'll be able to get and open in a second. Oh, there we go. Nice big chunky zone padlock with security pins versus a city rake. Let's throw in some turning tools and give this uh, a bit of a go. So it's going to give this a, a, a little bit of a, a rock and a rake. And we have that open. These tools are a little bit thick for picking from the bottom of the keyway in these non-paracentric American locks, sadly. So uh, they do tend to sort of grip hold your tools um, so they won't come out. So yeah, won't be able to use that technique with this DeForest ball. That being said, profiles like a half diamond are super, super flexible. So we can just go in, do a bit of raking. We can uh, get ourselves already into a false set, hit up pin. Um, one here at the front, which is super high set. Uh, do I need to pick it again? Yes, we do. Back through the lock, push away forwards underneath some of these pins, which um, clearly are spools and give, are giving me some good counter rotation, like pin six at the back there. Back through the lock, this is pin four. Uh, just going back through anything which gives me counter rotation, I can pick pin one again, I think, and we are open. So yeah, there's more than one way to skin that cat. Oh, because we have a wafer lock, we might as well use the ball rake. Why not? Wafer locks never get any love. And uh, well, let's show them a little bit of love on this channel. Just going to pop in a nice piece of bent wiper blade. Make sure that I've got turning force because this particular lock, particular lock um, has a lot of movements and play in it. And then it's just scrubbing um, back and forth with that ball rake until we get the open. Nice vintage lock too, huh? So there you go. Yeah, I didn't pick many high security locks. I never do in my reviews because it's more about 
the so there you go i mean clearly they can be pretty capable in some pretty normal locks. Yes, I didn't pick anything too high security, but I never do all my reviews because of time constraints. Uh, it's more about, do they do anything at all? Can they be used more than uh, what my particular picker's skill is like? So, you know, these are able to pick a lot of very commonly found lock brands out there, and they perform pretty well, they feel comfortable, and the I don't know what you call this sort of hard rubberized foam I guess handles in red I think they look kind of neat and they feel good these are full shank the feedback on these picks well okay so they are a bit thick so you'd expect them to have good uh, feedback as well but they, they the feedback is good they are comfortable the finish on these is usable although like I said I would polish these up so in terms of pros you know the price the selection the comfort the feedback um, the general finish, I, I really think these have got a lot going for them. The cons to this set though are that, well, they are a bit thick. Yeah, there are going to be a lot of keyways out there, especially some of the tighter European style keyways, those paracentric profiles. You, you're just not going to be able to get, get these picks in half the time. You might get lucky on some of the locks, but on others, you're just going to find that these just feel cumbersome and, uh, and and clunky. You could mitigate that by sanding them down a little bit, sure. Uh, but yeah, it's not going to get you into a lot of those higher security locks where you know you need profiles at least under twenty five thousandths of an inch in terms of their thickness. Um, that being said, the shank heights are all pretty usable. None of them are particularly uh, obnoxious. Um, the widest possibly being on these picks where you're using lateral force so uh, that would make sense and uh, and some of them are, are really quite nice and slim yes they're a bit thick this way but that does give them some strength one of the cons would be that these are probably not made out of the best steel they appear to be some form of stainless but um, I couldn't swear by it but you know what usable profiles uh, which are Finished well enough to use with comfortable handles with good feedback. Yes, they're a bit thick, but that, I think that's where that compromise comes from. Would I recommend this to a, a first-time picker on a budget? Yeah, I probably would. Um, do I think there are better lock pick sets out there? Absolutely there are, but they will cost you a bit more money. You tend to get what you pay for. I just think that this seems to be, appears to be quite good value. Now, how long will they last? I've been picking on these for uh, a few hours, uh, practicing, recording videos, those kind of things, and they hold up really well. They are quite thick, but I'm an experienced lock picker, so I can't guarantee you how long these will last, but they appear to be pretty robust. That's the best I can say. And I can say, out of all the budget lock pick sets that I have used, they hold up extremely well to the point where I do think that these are probably the best value budget off-brand lock picks out there at the moment. But I would love for you to uh, disagree with me and let me know of other sets because I can then get hold of them and review them. Uh, so I'd really like to know what you think for around uh, 20 quid, 25 US dollars, that kind of uh, area. What do you think to this honest lockpick set in terms of its profiles, what it gives you for the money, uh, the, the selection, the finish, all those kind of things. L really let me know in the comments. Generally would like to know. I'm quite impressed by it. I'm glad that I spent my 20 quid on it. I'll probably use it in a few more videos <laughs> down the line as well. But yeah, let me know your comments. If you like this video, then leave a like. If you, have, um, if you haven't subscribed to my channel and want to help my channel out, then please do consider subscribing to get more content like this. And of course, I'll see you all next time.